podcast featuring daily excellence titled Mike from COT has global update episode number 45. In this episode, we're joined by Mike from Council of Time, providing invaluable insights into global matters. We're honored to have access to the teachings of Michael from Council of Time, a distinguished Christian apologist. To go deeper into Michael's enlightening teachings, visit the official Council of Time website linked in the description. Join the COT family dedicated to spreading God's word and truth in these end generation times. Your support fuels our mission and explores the transformative power of a close relationship with the Most High. Don't miss out and explore today. Before we dive into today's rebroadcast of Mike from COT has Global Update, episode number 45, I want to express our sincere gratitude for your unwavering support. As we share these podcasts and explore new avenues like Patreon and merchandise, we're committed to keeping this podcast commercial free. Your support enables us to spread God's holy word worldwide. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and message us for daily excellence in your life. Stay tuned for today's insightful discussion here on In Generation Project. Peace and blessings to you all. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, that did it for uh, the mishap, didn't it? Guys, it's good to be with you guys today. I know that uh, inactivity is just not us, is it? I've been very busy lately. I have been. I have been. You know how you take those big leaps of faith? Oh, my goodness gracious, did I take a big, ginormous one? And... System maintenance, guys. We just got done with that swapping drives. So we're going to have that email up there because I need your answer. And that we're going to have the emails and a polling uh, area on the homepage so you guys can put in your answers. In fact, we're going to do that a lot. So we're going to make a type of polling page so that you guys can give an answer to whatever we ask so we can come up with a collective opinion, make some decisions. How about that? Tonight we read out of Revelation 19. You guys ready? Everybody ready for this? As I'm reading, I may not be able to see you guys, but uh, in between, you guys are always free to ask questions. Of course, if I get heavily involved, I won't be able to see you guys. I won't. Okay? Anyway, not polling like politics either. Please, no politics here. Of course, we, I, I tell you what, though. I am praying for the sake of Israel that uh, a difference take place. We need, um, you know, this world is uh, headed for something. We can't dodge prophecy. But if you know the word of God, the Lord delays what he has decreed for our sakes, right? He does that all the time, all the time. Hmm. Somebody says, Mike, have a question. Right, right off, Texas has put out a statement of urgency to stock up on food and gas. Yes. Guys, I'm going to cover something tonight. Uh, halfway in the study, right? And we'll cover a topic uh, I hope you guys are ready. hope that everybody is ready. In fact, here at CRT, we have talked about a few subjects, and I hope you guys uh, did not think it was a playful subject, but I hope that you guys are prepared. I said it before. I'll say it again. I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to be on station during a lot of uh, global confusion. All right? I'll be here on station at COT attempting to assist anybody I can and to keep you guys informed. It is about to get uh, very confusing. I do pray that you guys are in position. I do pray. Because those who are not in position, as I said before, lots of consequences are coming. 
they're going to be, there's going to be a real casualty count. We're talking about the USA. We're also talking about Europe. We're also talking about the UK. These countries are not outside of the danger zone. All right. I will do my best to help you guys all along the way. I'll do that. So everybody here, I will cover that statement about Texas. By the way, that's a precaution, right? That's not uh, politics. It is not. But Texas is not the only one. It's not the only one. We have a few things we'll discuss. So we'll do that after this study. This study will be probably half of a study. Then we're going to go into some global issues. I want to break it down to you guys so that you understand these issues. Not from a media perspective. I'm not going to read reports. I'm not doing that. I will tell you directly, as I always do, you guys may take it or not, but I certainly do hope that you guys are prepped and ready. And I hope that you have stored up your mercies, right? Hope that your garden, your harvest of mercy is uh, plentiful. Many people will need those mercies. In fact, this is going to be one of those reaping times that if a person did not sow mercy, right, seek prayer immediately. We know if we sowed mercy or not. We know if we've been merciful or not. Everything you have sown, this is one of those times. It will come back to you. And get ready for the white trains. But we'll cover some more of that this week, too, because we have that on the schedule, actually, about those uh, trains that were mentioned by some guy in the bushes. We will be talking about that, okay? That's a Wednesday, which is tomorrow. I think you guys seem to know about that, too. All right. Revelation 19. You guys ready? You guys ready? And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Do you guys see that? Revelation 19, 2. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication. Pause. She corrupted the entire earth with her fornication. Is this a local thing, or has it spread? Right? Remember last time, Revelation 16, we covered something very important, right? That God will avenge the sinners of, of this. He'll avenge us, right? And the sinners of the earth are the ones who killed the prophets. The sinners are the ones, right, who shed blood. So if sinners are, in fact, con they constitute a type of nation in God's eyes, when that be Babylon, because God will avenge. He will avenge his people, and he will pay back, he says, the whore Babylon. Can you see how they're one and the same? Listen to me. Now, this is why you have to cover this piece by piece. You have this woman who sits atop the beast on her forehead is mystery Babylon. Right? We know what that is. There's a fallen state of a person and a redeemed state of a person. God left the fallen state out in all the measurements, didn't he? He said, don't measure the court without. It's given to the what? It's given to the what? It's trampled underfoot, right? It's given to the Gentiles or the heathens, right? So he did not measure that. Why? It was corrupted. It's not accounted among the holy things. It is corrupted. So now we know why this woman has mystery Babylon on her forehead. We also know that the beast hates this woman in this entire earth. The entire earth, there's only one nation. One nation. 
Satan has been after from the beginning. Who is that? In fact, that, that chapter that covers the woman with the 12 stars, it ends with Satan pursuing the remnant of her seed. So we know that Satan is against Israel. We know that. Satan is against Israel. But the earthly Israel, that's going to be trampled underfoot. If you notice what happened in the book of Matthew, Jesus said those in Judea flee into the mountains. When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, so essentially he's telling all those who would obey, just like in the time of Jeremiah, right? When they were sent into exile, something similar happened. When God speaks, those who are obedient are the righteous. Those who are not obedient become the unrighteous. All those who flee, right? All those who flee are kept. They are kept. Those who stay, obviously, they didn't hear the message to flee, right? And if you think about it in common day terms, they do not accept that the Messiah has come. So they're not listening to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? They're going to disregard that. They're going to stay there. They're going to be trampled underfoot 40 and two months. Now, some will be, some will be tried, Many days, as it states in the book of Daniel, right? Some will be refined this way. But God's righteous are being called out of that place, right? Those in Judea are going to flee into the mountains. They will be kept, okay? Now, when they trample Jerusalem underfoot, horrible things are going to happen there. Horrible things. And in the book of Daniel, the Antichrist goes into Jerusalem, and he takes it with an army, right? So the unrighteous folks, the unrighteous ones, the fallen state of Israel, the earthly state is that woman. But then God mentions in Revelation, there's another Babylon spoken of, and it is the entire earth. Not just the woman, but the entire earth and its fallen state, right? Right? And you'll quickly see they're all lumped in together. Sinners with sinners. Isn't that what Jesus said, that he would separate the wheat and the tear? He would gather up all the tares first. Didn't he say that? He said he would gather all of them first. How are they gathered? If you read the Bible, they join forces with each other. They become this dark kingdom in the earth. I call it the system of the beast. That is the collection of the sinners of this earth, and the righteous are truly a remnant at that time, right? We read in Revelation 9, Revelation 16, specifically named uh, those sinners. It was, it was quite easy to see, right, that the sinful folks in that, uh, in that chapter, God was speaking about those who are sinful, right, who are very sinful. And he said he, he a third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers, and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I said, and I heard an angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which are, and which was, and which shall be, because thou hast thus judged. For they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Who? Those who are left. Those who are left in that area. Those who are left throughout the world. Because the blood was upon all the waters of the earth. It, it kept naming the earth and those who had the mark of the beast, right? Revelation 16, 2, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and greasome, a grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. So those who had the mark of the beast, right, they constitute Babylon. They constitute sinners. And it was sinners who shed the blood of the prophets. It was sinners who killed the prophets, who killed those men called by Christ and by the living God. They were all sinners. And in this case, sinners are given blood to drink because sinners, well, they killed the prophets. They shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, sinners. Just like at the end of the book of Revelation, you find that the entire earth has become Gog Magog. Not just one area, but the entire earth. Then God fulfills what he decreed upon Gog Magog. 
doesn't he? So this same theme happens all the time. You see that? You guys know how Babylon started? Why so rotten? Jezebel. God promised to avenge, right? To avenge his people. Upon who, though? Upon who? Jezebel had everything to do with it, right? Jezebel. Listen, and thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. Hear that? Second Kings 9, 7. So we have this continual theme. God is clearly naming Babylon, right? That spirit of Jezebel, of Jezebel, is what? Is what? Is the reason that she is a what? That woman on her forehead written mystery Babylon, that is the adopted spirit that was keenly found in, in this time, keenly found in the time of Christ. In Israel, in Israel, the fallen state of Israel, just like you have a fallen state to yourselves, right? You do. It's called the old man. Because of Christ, he's coming back to save what part of you? The redeemable side, right? Not the sinful side. You're going to be separated from all your dark works, from all your iniquities, and only God can do that. Only God can both forgive and separate you from all those iniquities. Only God can do that. And that that's awesome. And so he's going to do that to a nation. He's going to do that to the entire earth. Do you see that? You see how this goes, don't you? Huh? He does it to the people. To the people. They are separated. Then he does it as promised to a nation. He promised, he declared, he would do that to a nation. And it's the will of God that Jesus save us. He's doing it to us, to a people. Isn't that awesome? So then these awful kingdoms of the past, that were indeed kingdoms in the past, had a spirit about them, a driving force. That driving force is alive today. It never died. Satan is behind that driving force. You see? Satan is. And so now, when Satan gets his grip on a nation, when Satan gets his grip on a people, they become what? Sinful. They become sinful. See? Very sinful. And God is going to do away with all sin. Because if he does not separate us, if he doesn't separate our iniquities and do away with them, we're non-redeemable. So hopefully you can see that. I mean, it's quite clear. What about Gog Magog? Remember the promise he made with Gog Magog? You remember that? A lot of people talk about that, and they look for that prophecy in the Bible. In Revelation, you read something at the very end, right? At the very end of Revelation, you read something about Gog Magog, how that God will keep, once he binds Satan up, right? He's going to bind him a thousand years. Once he's loosed, Satan goes out and deceives the four corners of the earth. It says, and Gog Magog. It's Gog Magog at that time. So then the entire earth, that's found in Revelation 27 and 10. The entire earth becomes Gog Magog, right? And when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. You see that declaration. God made another declaration, right, about Gog, Magog. Now you see the finishing episode, the, the, the finished chapter of Gog, Magog. God is fulfilling everything he said he would fulfill. God is doing everything he said he would do. Right? He's doing everything. And everything will be done. Everything will be done. 
Babylon's the same way. So we're right here in Babylon, right? When in 19, when we start, when we see the same Babylon pop up again, this thing, this woman, right? Her, he says, he says, you have judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand, not at nobody else's hand, at her hand. What do you see happening now? Look at your own personal lives. Look at your personal life. Nobody out there, can, can anybody out there tell me that any of these kingdoms are holy? Are they holy or do they have the mark of Cain? What is the mark of Cain? Anybody know what that is? Cain had a mark indeed, but it's also something spiritual that carried on throughout the word of God. It means this. A person must destroy someone to win. That's what Cain did. Cain destroyed his brother in an attempt that God may favor him, right? He killed his brother so that God may favor him. Is that not the earthly competition that you're taught? Is it? Isn't it? Listen, the ideology is backed by all sports. It's the same thing through and through right there in front of your faces. To kill any competition out there so that you can win. It's right there in front of your faces. It's just that you have people in the earth that have made it fun. You didn't make it fun. You may enjoy games and things like that, but you didn't make it that way. You don't think somebody thought this out? Of course they did. They thought this out. And where do they get that idea? Who do you think? Who do you think? Everything in this world is designed that the only way you can truly win is to murder another. To get a promotion, somebody's going to have to be murdered at their job, in a sense, right? You get Only one person can get a promotion, thus it breeds competition. Now, in men's kingdoms, they say, hey, competition yields good ideas, refined work, this, that, and the other. Of course it does, because people are killing each other to get whatever they have to get ahead of the other guy. Because if they don't, somebody's going to kill them. That's the entire world operates this way. It is right there in front of everybody's faces. And so all these kingdoms are designed this way. Is that holy or unholy? Hmm? Is that holy or unholy? We're Christians. Isn't it kind of unholy? Of course it is. Anything born of the earth, how can it be holy? Hmm? How can it be holy? So we know what that is. We know exactly what it is. We have to live here. We've seen this process through and through. We know exactly what that is. And see, if Jesus does not come back, no one can put an end to it. No one. No one. Because the majority, see, when you're away from other Christians, you cannot put an end to it, can you? You can't. You can't convince people out there to throw away capitalism, to throw away the games and sports and competition, all that. You can't do that. You would have to provide some sort of alternative. And unfortunately, right now, any alternative will not work where you have unrighteousness. If everybody was righteous, there would be no competition. Everybody would win. That's impossible. That's impossible because we're bound in flesh. So if Christ does not come back, this stuff just continues and it consumes. Look at the world right now. Look at the world right now. What do you see? What do you see? Hmm? The Lord said, you'll know a tree by its fruit. Do you know the many casualties of this world from simple processes? Do you? Listen. In this world, somebody always has to lose. And people are playing dirtier and dirtier to win. It's just like, um, and it's, it's part of the earth. It's part of the earth, right? It's part of these systems in the earth. Now, we have to hear this. We have to look at this. We are not to take part in the unholiness of the world. You know what that means? When you're, if you're in politics, anybody out there, because we do have a few here that are in politics, if, if you're in politics, you're not to take joy. You're not to take joy. 
nor have your heart lifted through the demise of another, nor are you to hope for the demise of another. Whatever you hope on your enemy, you will have yourselves. Do you hear me? Whatever you hope on your enemy, you're going to have yourselves. In that hour of reaping, is building. An hour of reaping for all these little mysterious desires that people have operated by. They're going to have to eat from their garden. Hmm? We live in this world. We have to function. We have to operate. But we're not to take joy in murder. We're not to take joy in those acts that are just like Cain, who slew his brother, that God may receive his sacrifice, because his brother's sacrifice was accepted over his, so he got rid of the competition. We're not to take joy in that. Never. And if we do take joy in that, we need a heart check, don't we? Because we're not supposed to be doing that. If we take joy in that, one of two things, either we cannot see, the nature of it, right? Or something is wrong with our hearts. Politics. Have you guys looked at the history of politics? Any political science majors out there? Anybody? Because if you are a political science major, you know the art of destruction. That's what politics is. You know what that is. You know what they breed and they inbreed in people, and they keep it within small little groups and societies. And unfortunately, when you're dealing with flesh, it is the only way forward. Again, without Christ, without Christ, there is no deliverance. Man cannot deliver himself from this stuff. He cannot. Can't do it. Let's continue. Revelation 19, 3, and I, and again, they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. Now listen to that. Her smoke rose up forever and ever. We know this is not one spot on the face of the earth. We know this is the entire earth. We know this by the book of Isaiah. When the earth was burning, right? The earth was burning. We know this by revelation when the earth is totally rent asunder. Right? You know this whole thing. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were a voice of a great multitude and a voice of many waters. And as the voice of the mighty thunderings saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen and clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. You gotta love that. The fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, plural. Not one saint, all saints. So she was, she was arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So then Christ succeeded, didn't he? Because it says he will present himself. He will present to himself. He died on the cross that he may present to himself a church without spot or blemish. He succeeded. Thank you, Lord. That's pretty awesome, too, if you think about it, because it's speaking in the future. You can back there when it states that, you know, that's, that's a future tense. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Listen, listen. 
Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. No one else. The Lamb. Catholics. How many Catholics do we have here? How many? How many Catholics do we? Don't be, don't be afraid if you're a Catholic. Don't do that. We're all people here, right? Human beings, sinners saved by grace on our way going through this process. Time for us to know one another, don't you think? Time for us to reason with one another. And the reason why I'm asking Catholics is to see, to ensure that their relationship with the Lamb is indeed a relationship with the Lamb. Because only by the Lamb can anybody be saved. Please ensure yourselves of that. And I fell down at his feet and worshipped. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Let me read that one more time. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Well, prophecy, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. You better believe it. It is indeed the words of our Father, because he is the word of our Father. Mm. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him. He was called and faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And in righteousness, you know, sometimes people get a bit aggressive on this part, like, yes, he's going to just smack the devil all over the place. Let me share this with you. If we're all sinners saved by grace, then we did not earn salvation. Satan had a hold of us, too. The Bible states all of us were children of wrath before we were children of the Lord. We were servants of the prince of the air before we served the living God. This is righteousness, not a pep rally. This is the ending of a decree. Not a big crowd at a boxing match. This is the closure of what the Lord said he would do. God's fine are not fights of flesh. You don't fight spiritually like people and animals do, which are flesh and blood. It does not translate. Also, take note. Take note of how many times you may not have made it. Hmm? See, I know if you love the Lord Jesus and you really believe in his gospel, I know you're going to make it. You won't fall away. You're going to be salvaged, promoted, protected, delivered. I know that. But without God's grace, it wouldn't have happened. Without God's mercy, no place would have been given for us. Without God adopting us, there would be no us. We would be the ones being defeated. That God would absolutely judge into oblivion. But by grace we're not. We did not earn it. We did not earn it. We failed. You guys do understand that, right? We failed 
We did not succeed. Jesus succeeded. We did not succeed. We failed. And because he succeeded, we are secured. We must never forget that. We're not saved by works. So why would we boast as though somehow we made it by works? We can't. We can't. We can be thankful. But we cannot boast as though somehow by our power we made it. No. No. white horse he that sat upon him is faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and it was closed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God as Christ we know who that is and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. And with it he should smite the nations. See then, out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. They will not disobey and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. Jesus does that. He treads the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God. He is that wrath. That same word of love and of grace and of invitation that same word, the exact same word, is the doom of darkness that rejected his mercy, his grace, and his salvation. Because it did not respond to love itself, which foretells of its origin. What would not respond to love if God is love and Jesus is the word of God, then that word spoke of love and darkness does not respond to love. He's starting to see something. Mm -hmm. By his word, the nations were smitten. And his word is bound in love. And darkness and cruelty and wrath and anger rejects love, doesn't it? All those who partake of that partake of darkness. That's why Jesus said, love your enemies. Because if you can love your enemies, you will not murder your enemy. Do you see that? Is that not the conflict and every human being to love or to not love. Isn't it that simple? Because when you love, you forgive. When you love, you apply grace to whatever situation is in front of you. When you don't love, you plot revenge. When you don't love, you want someone to pay for something. In other words, when you want someone to pay for something, you're calling for their death. That creates a hunger of darkness. And whatever avenue people use, it's still darkness. Which is why no minister, no minister should ever help anyone avenge anything. Have they lost the word? I, it, you see that more and more. You see that more and more and more and more. 
you read something. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men don't always pray, and not to faint, saying, There was in his city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. There was a widow in that city. She came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said to himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. As by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith? And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with him? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? That's in the book of Luke, chapter 18, a parable. It's a parable. You have a lot of people who want someone to pay for something. That breeds nothing but a type of cruelty in the heart of the one that practices or entertains that thought. And in today's world, you have ministers, pastors, assisting a person to avenge this person and that person, yet the Lord who is in all authority does not avenge at this time, but has declared an era of grace, of grace, 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 grace. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place under wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Romans twelve nineteen. But and if you hear anything on media, it's all about vengeance. It gets people worked up. The message is about vengeance. And it really foretells a direction we're going in. They refuse to alter course. They're going headlong into their own vengeance. You already should know what that's going to stir because it's already stirring. And when the gavel falls, many will pay. And I pray you guys are not part of it. I pray your hearts, your minds, are upon the decrees of the Most High, who said vengeance is mine. Hmm. Vengeance is mine. It's my prayer. Let's continue. So, out of his mouth a sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations, and shall rule them with a rod of iron, which is to say they won't disobey, nor can they escape. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God. He hath on his vesture and on his thigh name written King of kings and Lord of lords. Now saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that we may eat flesh of kings, and flesh of captains, and flesh of mighty men, and flesh of horses, and them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, and small and great. Did you hear that? Again, again, let me emphasize, because this is Revelation 19, 18. We were talking about God avenging the great whore. And here you have in Revelation 19, 18, 
of the whole world. And all men, all men, they're doomed. Now I saw a beast, and the kings of the earth and the armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. They're gone. The beast, of course, the first beast, is that set of nations, the one with the seven heads, the one with the ten horns, right? Or the, the horns and the crowns. The second beast that has two horns like a lamb, but spake as a dragon, right? The one that instituted or, or, or integrated that mark and had everyone take the marks, the same one that made the image to the first beast and caused everybody to worship it. So the false prophet and the Antichrist are one and the same. See that? Hmm. You see that? And the remnant, it says, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. His word, his decree. All right. Now, that was the end of that chapter. You guys you guys have a, a, a question. Somebody has a question. I know what you guys have a question on. We'll cover it again. No problem. Somebody get confused on the beast. The fowls or the evil birds. Well, I'll tell you what, in this context, all right, we don't deal with those foul. We don't. God gave an avenue of what they're doing. I, I would say, I would say this. Nobody wants to know what those fowls are. Remember some, please remember something. There are elements of this earth the common person has not seen yet, and they are real. They're not fake. They're not mythos. They're real. They're just not doing anything to man yet. All right? You never forget about that element that people cannot see nor interact with. That stuff that's this, this decree is going to happen to those on earth who refused love itself, who refused Christ, who refused the living God. They refused him. They were part of Of that big body of sinners, they were also those who took the mark of the beast. There were also those who worshipped the beast. Remember that. These are those who had the mark. Hmm? These are those who had the mark of the beast. And only doom awaits them. Okay. Somebody says, explain this to me, Mike, chapter 518. Whoso is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of judgment. Yeah, they will be in danger of judgment. Oh, that's a good one. What is that? What did they say, Matthew, Matthew 518? Oh, let's handle that. Then we'll go to break. I was going to go to break, but I can't let that go. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Can't do it. Matthew 518. Well, let's go to Matthew 518. It says, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth, this is 518, did you get the wrong one? Let me see, let me see, let me see, you gave me the wrong, I got the wrong thing here. Where, where's that at? I'm looking at Matthew chapter 518. 518 says, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, or till heaven and earth pass, one jot, or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, that, that one you just mentioned, which was, Whoso, Whosoever is angry with this brother, as 522. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with this brother without cause 
shall be in danger of judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of counsel, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. See that? That was uh, 0099. See that? So let's understand this very self-explanatory. He says, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. In, of judgment. What is being angry with someone without cause? Some of you did not know me. Right? Some of you don't know President Biden. Right? Just didn't. So... Some of you don't know other folks out there, but sometimes you can look at a person and you're repulsed. Sometimes you can hear something about a person and you believe it and you're repulsed, right? See, uh, uh, gossip is never a cause. Tell bearing, which is something God hates, is never a cause. That's why I will never base anything off something somebody else says. Because if I do that, I'm entertaining something God does not like, and if I act on that, he already covered that in the Proverbs, if I act on that, I'm the one in trouble. I'm the one in trouble, right? And you aren't in, in danger of judgment. The Lord says, judge not that ye be not judged. So if you judge someone like that, you're going to be judged. Now I said you're in danger of judgment. Did you guys catch that? It did not say you're going to be judged, thrown right to hell itself. It says you're going to be in danger of judgment. These are life complications, right? I, I, can, I can almost promise you this. If you don't like a person based on what somebody else said and you have no knowledge of that person, you're going to meet a person or somebody in your family or in your circle all of a sudden is going to turn on you. This keeps the yo-yo of life going. Right? I do not have that yo-yo of life. I have no surprises in my life like that. Do you know why? I don't sow seeds. Dealing with anger, dealing with dislike and all this nonsense, I don't do that. When I shut that off, there were no more surprises like that. Prior to me shutting that off, there were always surprises like that. Right? You know how somebody blindsides you, somebody backstabs you, or something like that happens? Right? Well, think back. Isn't it because we always seem to believe somebody else's negative opinion of somebody we don't even know? Truth be told, how many people have a personal relationship with Trump and Biden? This is for the body of Christ. Because the Lord Jesus is not going to, he's still not going to approve of anybody's negative comments concerning neither of them. And most of the negative comments are in the body of Christ. And the Lord has already given his decree on what will happen when people continue to do this. So it's coming and it's not going to stop because people will not relent. My, my. So people have put themselves in danger of judgment. They don't know who these guys are. They don't know what motivates them to do what they do. They're assuming. They're listening to somebody else's hearsay, and they're believing it. So I got a question for you. What if it's not the truth, and you're acting on a lie? Is God going to be pleased with that? Because not one of us is to act on a lie. Not one of us. We're not to act. We're not to walk by sight. Are we? We're not to live our lives that way either. We're children of faith. We're children of forgiveness. We exist because we were forgiven. So we are alive because we have been forgiven yet, yet, yet. We're influencing other people not to forgive. We exist today with reasonable health because God has not judged us, yet we would pass judgment. Oh, my. Something is wrong. How can, how can so many people continue to ignore that? 
Christ would not approve of that. And he has not approved of it. We are kept by his mercy. That means when we deserve death, he did not kill us. He's being merciful. I fear that people are taking that mercy and grace for granted. In a time of consequences come. During a time of consequence, men fall. And they never rise. Both the righteous and unrighteous. That's when it rains upon the just as well as the unjust. Mm. Think about it. I give that caution. Out of deep concern for you. Not for, not to save the pants of another person. No. That's for us. I know the danger involved. You don't want that danger upon your heads or upon your family. You will invite darkness into your own family. You'll invite spirits that will agree with your opinions. Me, I've seen behind the curtain. I've got the good and the bad on many people. I know what the hype is. I know some disgusting things. But I'm not one to condemn anybody. Based on how disgusting they are. Because I'm not willing to let Satan continue to ravage humanity. I do not agree with Satan. Don't you know Satan loves it when we condemn our fellow man. Satan loves it when we refuse to pray for the deliverance of someone and to allow Satan to do what he wants. Don't let the world make you turn this into some game. This is not a game. This is life or death. This is permanent. And I'm not willing that Satan ravage human beings out there. That's why I don't judge. I will pray. The Lord knows the truth of them and me. And I'm no better than any of them. But see... To be acceptable to your peers. You can't be that way. I already know that. If you're going to be accepted by your peers, you cannot be the one that prays for your enemy. That comes with a great cost. A price. I paid that price a couple of times. It's not a price someone should accept easily either. But I'll continue to accept the price. Whatever it is. Because I will not side with Satan. Satan is the only one who agrees with someone being destroyed in the earth. Our father does not. He does not. The day he agrees that people should be destroyed will be the day he judges. Until that time, we're under a blanket of grace and mercy. We forget that, don't we? We do forget that. But see, but see, that's what these little talks are about, to encourage the Lord's way. We all know what the ways of the earth are. We all know how they can seem like they do no harm. We all know how it can sometimes seem. We're doing something right and wholesome, that is, until the Lord tells us otherwise, right? That's why we encourage the walk of faith, not the walk of flesh.
makes these little talks good, right? Not that we should be enemies because we can't agree on who we like as candidates. You guys like whatever candidate you like. You may not like the other. I'm encouraging you to think about something. That your father in heaven loved this world so much that he gave his only begotten son. When they were still yet sinners, he gave his son. You know what that means? The worst person you can think of in the earth, Christ died for. Christ suffered for. Christ paid the price for. Me? If my Lord paid the price for the worst person in the world out there, there's no way in the world I'm going to go against the love of God towards what he loves so much. It is your father who loves humanity. That's why people still can sin and still walk. That's why. That's why they still have breath. Not because of anything else but God's love but his grace and his mercy, because he's not willing. He's not, he does not want, he made that clear in the word of God. He does not want anybody to perish outside of him. He doesn't. So he's given us a length of time. He even extended that time, it seems. But he always promised that when the body of Christ began to turn, he was coming back. You're the marker. That falling away, that's when people of faith stop operating by faith. That's when they fall away. That's when everything starts to be fulfilled in hyper time. That's when he'll make a quick work of the end times process. It's when you begin to agree with the ways of the world. That's when he's coming. And if you take a look at the world, you're going to see that more and more every day. More and more people who once truly loved the Lord now agree with the world. And they walk in that manner. Is happening more and more. I'll be back in a few minutes right here at COT. Okay, we're back again. I think I, everything is running. All right. You guys hear me okay? Hopefully you do. All right. All right, you all. Where are we at? All right. So I know this is, uh, that was the end of, boy, that was quick. That was 19. That was 19. Somebody says, are the days shortened? Well, I want you guys to think of Revelation like this. Many of us, when you're at work, when you're at work or working on something, and you don't want to do the work, right? The day lasts for a long time, correct? It's a long time. In fact, when you don't, want, when you don't like the job you're doing, the day lasts forever. Correct? You look at the clock and it seems like the hand quit moving. The numbers, the digits aren't counting up. They're not iterating correctly. So, but when you enjoy the work, when you really do enjoy it, uh, there's not enough time in a day. Correct? Not enough time in a day. In the end days, we're coming down to truth. Those who love the Lord, who really love him, are going to for, forego many things in their lives. And they're going to be doing the Lord's work. And when you get involved doing things of the Lord, the days are going to whiz by. I would say for the believers, for the believers, time is going to be greatly shortened. I would say that. I see that for a few reasons, but keenly. Because in Revelation, you read that those who got the victory over the beast, they loved their lives, not unto death, which means 
they were totally sold out on Christ. Right? That means those who stay in that faithful walk, the Holy Spirit's going to be strong with them. I mean, strong, right? Look, I can tell you about me on that one. You couldn't have told me 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I would be doing this. You couldn't have told me that. And this is just what you guys know about, right? You don't know about anything else but me talking on COT. No one could have told me I'd be doing this. And I can tell you right now, the years are, for me, the years are flying by. Nothing is boring. Nothing is mundane, right? Nothing is. With, with all the aches and pains and the, the, everything else, right? The unfortunate things as well as fortunate things. Time is just it's going by. In fact, many of you say, Lord, hurry up and come. And you know what I find myself saying? Hmm? Lord, you got to give me time to get to this and to get to this and to get to this over here and to this over here. And all of it's for the kingdom. All of it is. So the days to me go so fast. They do. They go really fast. Those who are not interested in the Lord's work, who are not doing anything for the Lord, time is going to slow down for those folks. Right? It's really going to slow down. When you love the Lord, you're not going to help but to be busy with it. And when the Spirit is increased upon you, time is not going to exist to you. Right? One real notable thing with me is this. When it comes to people, they never get old. Everybody I've ever known, right? They don't get old. In other words, if, if I, I, I never get tired of people. Anybody else like that? The relationships I have with people are brand new today like they were the first day. I mean, just like that. They're just like the first day. But... There are some people who have relationships. They've seen the same person over and over again. They're totally tired of them. I'm never tired of them. It, it honestly is like seeing a person. Every time I see people, it's almost like seeing them for the first time. It is a deep appreciation, right? Everything is brand new every single day. Now that it has its cons, it really does, because other people notice that. They always ask me similar questions. They do. But that's the spirit. The Lord always said, if you draw close to him, he'll draw close to you. He always said that. When you draw close to him, right? Because I never tried to define who God is. God knows who he is. I'm not here to define who he is. Right? I'm here to follow him because of what Jesus did at the cross. I absolutely agree with the gospel of Jesus Christ in every aspect of it, even those parts that are against my own flesh. I love the Lord's word. I love his word. I really do. And so each person cannot exist in the time of the beast without the Holy Spirit. And as the Spirit pours out even more than what it has been, because it will be a necessity, God does everything in balance. As darkness rises, so will the Holy Spirit within you. And I'm telling you, it comes with a jolt. It comes with sincerity, right? It comes with maturity. It comes with a newness, a renewal, a quickening. It really does. So your days as believers are going to fly. But the unbelievers, their days are going to slow down to a crawl. You know in the Bible when it says they will seek death and will not find it? They'll be tormented for five months. Many will seek death, but death will flee from them. Now, if you're seeking death, time is too long. I did that at one of my stations one time, it was like I was seeking death and death wouldn't come. That, that job was that boring. It, it really was. It, it was just that dead, right? And it wouldn't come. I can only imagine what an unbeliever is going to experience during those days. 
and I do my best to make sure that nobody I, I would ever meet. I, I really do desire that everybody have that opportunity with Christ, which is why I'm very patient. I don't want to hammer anybody over the head with a word, right? Because there's always something extra I can say to stop conflicts and arguments and all this, that, and the other. Because every time, if, if anybody were to ever walk away, I would fell out, fail. Thank God. That has not happened in years. It really hasn't. I've not really gone to anybody who said no. That never happened. Didn't happen. Because I never just go to people myself. I always wait for the Lord to send me. And it's almost like he prepares the other people for whatever's coming. And oftentimes it is. it seems spontaneous. But the Lord has done a work. When I start talking, they can hear me. The, 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 the Lord sets that up. I see a lot of people, they just go to random individuals. Well, I think they need the word, and that's where the mistake is. I don't want to go to anybody because I think they need the word. No. I remember one time an evil person told me, they said, well, you probably don't know the Lord. And I didn't say anything. I was just sitting there. Right? And they talked. They had to have talked for about 15 minutes. And then my name was called to speak to an audience. And that person didn't know it. I just held my peace. I was listening to him. This person, right, was attempting to be someone. And nobody ever has to do that. Nobody. Nobody ever has to do that. The Lord will, he does an effective work. He's not going to send you to a place where his work is not done. The Lord is the one that finishes whatever he begins in you. So if, when he sends you, you better believe he prepared the other side. We just have to learn to be patient. But listen to me. There's a lot of people in between, right? And I've noticed something else about me. My behavior, my walk, my daily conversation, everything I do is scrutinized. It is scrutinized. If I were to ever demonstrate to anybody out there that somehow some unholy thing was permissible for a Christian. The Lord will set me back. He'd have me deal with myself. He would make me discover that area of my heart that needs work. Right? A Christian is not something, just a title. It's not what it is. It's a lifestyle. It's something you agree to be for the rest of your life. It is something that you become that you are. Right? That's what a Christian, that word Christian means Christ-like. And the only way a person can be Christ-like is to follow Christ, to agree with Christ, right? That's one question. If anybody should ask themselves something, it should be, do they agree with the whole gospel? Listen to me. Gospel is important. The whole gospel whatever Jesus spoke to you, agree with it. Because sometimes a lot of people do not agree with it. Like salvation, like forgiveness. Do you believe that everybody should be forgiven? Because God does. God does. He didn't strike them down yet, which means they have another opportunity, right? If, if, if people are alive right now, because God is giving them an opportunity, there should be no one in the world I would not like for them to know the Lord, which means I don't look at people like they're enemies. I don't do that. I can see a person totally taken over by darkness. I will pray for them. I do not agree with Satan. I agree with the Father and Christ. I don't agree with Satan. Right? So that would be one major question to ask yourself. Do you agree with the whole gospel? Anyway, somebody says, please pray for the salvation of my stepdaughter, Taylor, and her husband, Cody, plus the three children. They avoid me. I, I tell you what, keep praying. Listen, no one is going to leave this earth without that special moment. And what that special moment is, is when a person sees the Lord. They know exactly what he did. They know what they are. And they get a chance to answer. Everyone will have that moment. See, I know this. Nobody in the world needs me. They don't need me. The Lord does not need me. He loves me, right? It's a difference. 
No one needs me to bring the word anywhere. No one needs me to tell them about Christ. The Lord loves me, and so every day is an opportunity for me to partake of what he established, for me to assist someone, right? That's an opportunity. But I make no mistake. I'll never, ever say God needs me. He doesn't need me. He loves me. It's a difference. No more than we need a six-month-old baby. Right? We don't need a six-month-old baby. They poop, eat, throw up, do all sorts of things, and start it all over again. We don't need them. We love them. Right? I go so far as to say half of us would die for one of them, right? So we need, we love them. We don't need them. I can't do anything. What can I do for Christ? What can I, honestly, what, what, could, I, what could I contribute to the kingdom? What? What can I do? We mess up more than we fix, right? We're always oopsing. When we think we know something, the Lord gives us greater counsel only to find out we don't. The more I read of the word of God, the more I find out how much I never knew in the first place. Hmm? The Lord loves us. He loves us. So that means, listen though, everybody will have their opportunity to accept Christ. Do you hear me? So don't sit there thinking that somehow somebody's not going to have their opportunity to know Christ if you fall down in a ditch and nobody can find you. It does not work that way. It doesn't. For your families, if your families don't want to talk to you, fine. They're going to have their appointed moment. Continue to pray for them. Often the Lord will do that to strike all pride because let's go ahead and face it. When dealing with family, we have this bad habit. You know what the bad habit is? We do love them, yes. But we also think that sometimes they should receive the word from us because we know what we're talking about. That's prideful. Why would the Lord allow somebody Right To go through with that process when we are the ones who are prideful thinking that somebody needs to receive from us. Let me tell you something. When you love someone, you don't care who they receive it through. So continue to pray. Continue to pray. Right? My, my own personal family, they don't need to hear the word from me. So long as they get it from someone, I'm good to go. Right? This is about them accepting Christ, not them accepting me. I'm concerned about them accepting Christ, not me. So they, if the Lord sends someone, then I'm good, but I'll continue to pray. For those who don't want to receive the Lord, I'll pray. And I have faith in that. I will never mope thinking somehow. Somehow they're not going to receive the word. That doesn't cross my mind because I know what the Lord can do. He's demonstrated that too many times. He can go to the most isolated place on the world where nobody exists, and if he has to send a bug to contribute to the message of the gospel, he'll do so. He'll do so. Everybody will have that opportunity because everyone must choose. They must choose. So parents, don't get uh, downcast in countenance concerning your children even if your kids are 138 don't get downcast in countenance everybody must have their opportunity and understand this each of us must choose in truth i cannot choose for anybody you can't either they must choose in truth now some people are going to find out that their family members were never part of the family in the first place See, here's a fact. If you could see the spirit of each person, some people you wouldn't even claim as family. Hmm? But we cannot. We can't. We can't. So pray for them. Continue to pray for them. Hmm? Continue to pray. Somebody said, I have two nieces that are not saved. They say they believe in Jesus, but not the Bible because it was written by man. What can you say to them? You can say that God loves us. So he works through vessels of men to give a word that confirms something we already know inside of us. If they read that Bible, right, and they read something they never read before and they agree with it, ask them, how is it 
that you understand that scripture internally? How is it that you knew who Christ was? How is it that you knew who God was? That's called internal confirmation. That's what you tell them. And then leave it alone. Make sure you pray for them too. Make sure you tell them that Jesus is the word of God made flesh. All right? You cannot believe in Jesus if you don't know his words. Jesus is the word he spoke just like we are the word we speak. Your children would not know you unless they heard you speak. You have to communicate. And it's that communication we know. Do you know that? You know the communication of another person. Only God knows who the person is. You only know the communication of that person. Hmm? Think about it. You know me by what I'm saying, by audio. But you do not know me. God knows me. I know you by what you write. But I do not know you. If somebody is sitting right beside me, they can only know me by the communication. That includes what I do and all this other stuff. All that's part of communication. But only God knows me. You can't accept Christ unless you accept what he was saying. He was the last sacrifice. And he spoke many, many, many things about that sacrifice and what it stood for and what it does and why it came and all that's in his teachings. To believe in Christ is to believe in what he said. To believe in what he said is to hear the word, to hear the words, to have someone speak, to have someone speak. It means somebody read it. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit confirms it. And there you are. Now, in the other conversation about Texas, Texas will still yet issue some things to people about getting everything ready. Here's why. Let's go ahead and face it. We know what this election year is. We know what it is. We know it's going to cause some big ruffles everywhere. We know that. We know that there are extremist groups, about 28 or 30 of them, in the United States who are ready to act. We know that terrorists and Hamas are in the USA. We know that many of those Hamas leaders, many of those folks who, are, who favor Hamas have been trained in the U.S. military because those people... Right? We're born here in the USA and their parents were born here in the USA. And their parents' parents were born here in the USA. You may ask, so why are they terrorists? Because their country is still in their hearts by way of their heritage. See, that's the big mistake. We have illegals coming over. We do. But let me share this with you. There are lots of people in the military right now whose parents, 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 parents were here in the USA. They learn about history and their heritage. They like their heritage. They become loyal to it, not the USA. They've been trained by the military in all branches of the military. They're in all areas of business, all areas within the USA. And there are many of them, but there are many of them who are loyalists. See, when I start talking about sleeper cells, I'm not talking about illegal immigrants. I'm talking about people who live here in the USA, who grew up here, who play with some of you guys or whatever the case is, but they learn where they're from. And they end up building some sort of loyalty to their country more than they do the USA, and they start to see the expressed ideologies of fighting politicians and they choose their homeland over this land. That's the real problem. I hope you guys know that. It's a military problem. It's a big problem. And now we have to face it. They made all other situations, right? all other situations. They, like, for example, that guy that shot up those people in Fort Hood, Texas, who was a major. 119 soldiers from Texas were also arrested who agreed with his ideology.
technology, he was connected to other teams and other bases. These guys are constantly planning, like those two colonels who try to get the keys and the codes to nuclear weapons. Stuff like that is happening all the time. From above, from high places, right? They, their loyalty is with their own countries. And they are going to do damage in this nation. You know, the Bible teaches us your enemy is of your own household. It's of your own household. We will do well to heed the words of Christ concerning this nation. Because our enemy in this nation is of our own household. Not the thief who broke in. No. But the one who's been living with us. Right now, the loyalty of too many people is not with the USA. This is the great melting pot, and something has happened that's very devastating. Extremely devastating. Now, all of us have to face that music. And all the games are going to die in one day. Hmm? There we are. So when it comes to Texas, when it comes to other cities, in fact, all cities are about to face the same thing. We know there are radicals within this country. We know there are Caucasian Muslim radicals. Do you know what that means? That means, can you imagine a country guy, red hair, right? Born in Tennessee or something like that, loyal to Islam. Do you know how many Caucasians are accepting Islam within the USA? These are people who do not fit the profile of being Muslim. And if you guys knew the stats, it's quite alarming. They, what has happened is they see the dysfunctional state of our government. Now, how many, how many of you come from a broken home, meaning you only had one parent? How many of you only had one parent in the home? Type of one, if you only had one parent in the home. Type of one. Very interested to see how many people just have one parent in the home. Hmm. Quite a few. The numbers are going up. And so what this means is this. Since a lot of people only had one parent, nobody likes to see the dysfunctionality of leadership because that's like, you know, mom and dad of the USA, right? When you see them dysfunctional, it's going to subconsciously remind you of the brokenness that you know also well. You don't want that. So somebody just popped up and gave you some other alternative and you were inclined that way, you would accept your loyalty to a dysfunctional family would not stick anymore. You've had enough of that. Many of the young kids, you know what they're saying? That our government's a joke. A joke. All they do, listen, th this is from, this is very alarming. They continue to say that all they know how to do is fight each other, and that's why nothing is done. They need to do away with all of them. And these kids are serious. These, some of these, many of these kids are in medical school right now, becoming doctors. And they continue to say that our government is a farce. It is dysfunctional. It is ineffective. And if they don't hurry up and get rid of it, the whole nation's going to die. Lord have mercy. So that, you know what that really means is that people of influence have no more influence. They don't. You're going to see that in those who vote. Those who vote are going to be of a specific type of person. Right? Still, you have other races alienated in this process. They say they're not going to vote at all. It is really bad this year, and they know what the consequences are. So what's been happening to show that somebody's preparing for this? Haven't you guys noticed at the stores? The prices in the stores are easing up, right? 
while the contents are going down. Fast food restaurants have shrunk their little burgers once again. Did you guys know that? By at least a half an inch. A half an inch. So the burger that you used to hold with two hands, now you hold with one. Right? They're, they're, they're doing all sorts of things to cut the cost. Do you know why? It takes people to work those fields, right? It takes people to work those fields, and let's go ahead and face it. You know who was working those fields. You know who was working in those factories. You know who these people were. Now these companies have no choice and something else is happening. Uh-oh. Massive layoffs. You didn't hear anything about it. This weekend, in quite a few companies, people received a communication. They said, don't come into work. There is no more work. There, can you imagine working at a place for 14, 15 years, and all of a sudden you find out that the whole company is shut down? Can you imagine that? Google is laying off quite a few people. Facebook is laying off quite a few people. Everybody's doing cutbacks because they know what's coming. These are major corporations. They're cutting back. NASA's cutting back. JPL's cutting back. Military's cutting back. Everybody is cutting back. Everybody. TikTok, they're even cutting back. Development teams of all games across the industry, they're cutting back. And it is not because of AI. It's because they see a storm coming. And this storm is serious. See, people thought they were going to be crying about money. You're going to have all your money. You're just not going to have product. I'm sure we said that here before in COT, that you're going to have your money. You're just not going to have product. That's what the right trains are for. You're not going to have product. All these, do you guys know one of the biggest stores in the USA? The dollar stores. They're closing like you wouldn't believe. Closing. Lots of them are closing. They're going to consolidate food logistics. It's happening. And the trains are ready to roll. So you're going to have your bank account. You're going to have your money, your investments, and all that good stuff. You're just not going to have anything to buy. So I hope you've been changing your diet, not spoiling yourselves. And something is going to happen to the fuel. Already know, everybody thinks that the USA can supply its own fuel for a long time. Something's going to happen to the fuel. That means you'll have electricity. But no one will cut grass. No one's going to be driving cars. Because something is going to happen to the fuel. If we would have prayed and not fought. But now we're past a certain point. And the consequences are coming. Too many took part in hateful things. And the consequences must come. I know that may be difficult to understand right now, a little bit scary. If you belong to the Lord, you'll be guided. If you don't, you will end up taking the mark of the beast. The trains will be used for systematic distribution and trade, control trade. We drop the ball, and it is heartbreaking, but we drop the ball. But what we can do, what we can do, is make sure that we're authentic with the Lord. Because this 
We knew these times were coming. It's all throughout the Word of God. Right now, today, they're, they're, I, I'd say the majority of people have no idea what's coming. They don't. They don't know. They don't know how to prepare for what's coming. Even the people that do know, some of them don't know how to prepare. Preparation is useless if you have no guidance. And in this case, you're going to need spiritual guidance. Because not only are these things coming as a consequence of men's not handling or take care of one another, but we also have hostilities rising within every country. Have you guys noticed that each, the people of each nation is against the government of that nation? That means it's only a matter of time before the people fully turn on their own leadership. And they will take matters into their own hands. They will. This is when knowledge is going to be warped. Messages are going to be warped. Agendas are going to be fully shown. Nobody's going to care about hiding anything. People are going to become what they truly are on the inside. And no one will care to show anybody what they truly were. This is a time of your preparation of the soul. For real. Don't operate in fear. Please don't do that. No need for that. Fear is not going to accomplish anything, slow you down, or cause you to miss beautiful opportunities during this time. Think of this time as an alarm clock that is finally starting to sound. And it's going to be time for people to wake up from their long slumber. You guys were always meant to be in this generation. If that were not so, you wouldn't be in this generation. So that means somewhere within you is the wherewithal to handle everything you're going to be involved with. The Lord will call that forward. Make sure you keep your eyes on him, on the Lord. Be serious about your walk with the Lord. Be serious about your Christianity. Be loyal to what you serve. And I hope what you serve is Christ Jesus and our Father. He is our help. He is our provider. He is. Somebody says, aren't the bugs supposed to be an issue soon? They already are. You know what? Just It was last week, I believe, the weather warmed up in a few places. And uh, prematurely, insects started rolling out. They did. If that's any sign to what's coming, you know, we're going to lose, lose more trees in the northern regions. There's talk right now of a massive weather swap in Canada. I'll get more info on that. There's some things being worked out. Alaska's changing to it. It's not going to be the same. This is its year of alteration. So we're going to witness quite a few things. Quite a few things. Underneath your feet, there are heavy rodent migrations. That began two years ago, actually. And Pennsylvania, they had a real bad problem two years ago with rodents, and they were all going in one direction. I'm sure we heard that before, right? They're going to be actively hunting this year in this country with real sniffers. The bio teams are being put together, and those orders will be dispatched shortly. Then we have to deal with the storms, of course. I believe they have three new names for the thunderstorms that are reforming. Three new names. Now storms are spanning the totality of the USA. Updrafts will be sustained somewhere. In the, an updraft is a wind that starts at ground level and goes up. They will be around 148 miles an hour. That's pretty big hail. So it's going to produce some pretty big hail. Frequent hail 
Right? Hail has got to be common in a lot of different areas. And so we have a lot of ge geo changes, weather changes, people changes, right? And that's the beginning of it. That's the beginning. But as I said before, folks, I'll do everything necessary. I'll do everything I can do to keep folks in. In fact, this is my time of operation when it gets rough. I wasn't meant for peacetime. For the chaotic time, yes. Not for peacetime. That was everybody else. Everybody else. But in these times, people won't nitpick anymore. They're going to be all ears. So if you do report things, make sure you're very responsible in doing it. Right? Very responsible, very direct. Be direct. As direct as you can be. And as informative as you can be. Which means the days of mystique are over. Well, boy, that went quick, didn't it? That went real quick. Somebody says the stage is being set about, oh, well, wait a minute. There is a bacteria going around. There have been fatalities. And this bacteria came from the uh, ice. Five years ago, when they were down in those, in that ice, bacteria, ancient, old bacteria, right? Because bacteria can, and microbes, and, and those jokers are resilient. Well, evidently, that same bacteria somehow gets airborne. It, it kind of kind of like spores go all over the place, right? So listen to me. In order to avoid this, because this bacteria is causing infections in people's shoulders, and then it spreads throughout the body. So it will kind of eat a person from the inside out, right? Make sure, make sure that you wash your hands also. I'm not going to say the name of it because it's nasty, but there's a disease that you get from poop, right? And somehow through these storms, it's starting to spread to various places and it causes, you know, vomiting and all that stuff. So make sure, guys, you don't put, you don't, you're not letting, especially if you have pets, make sure that you do not stick your hands in your mouth. Don't do that. Okay? Don't do that. Because you'll get this that nasty disease which is caused by poop is being found in lots of hospitals, right? Now, here, here's how you know it's, it's uh, catching a flight on something, right? I, I would say with some of the new flying insects that we are experiencing, like some of the dragonflies that have come far north, they normally carry this stuff. And uh, this is the first time those type dragonflies have been seen in Tennessee. So make sure, guys, that you just wash your hands. You don't get that stuff in your mouth. No, it's not Ebola. It's a bacteria. So it's not it's, it's, it's not hemorrhagic fever or anything like that. So, But just make sure that you're washing your hands. You get the stuff off your hands, right? And if you have a microscope and you don't believe in washing your hands, just take, just take, a, take your fingernail, right, and get something very clean and, and uh, scrape the, your fingernail underneath and stick it under the microscope. And you'll start saying a whole nation full of things you don't want in your body because they live under your fingernails. So does uh, excrement, right? So be careful with that stuff. Please be careful. That they, There are all sorts of stuff. It's starting to spread. You know what the Bible says? God said, come out over my people. Be, be not partakers of her sins that you won't partake of our plagues. It's in Revelation that Jesus said plagues are going to be all over the place. Jesus spoke in the New Testament about end times plagues, of disease and famine and all sorts of things. So it's going to spread everywhere, right? I have a good friend that caught the infection in his shoulders, and they had to cut him open to get the infection out of both shoulders. He's still hospitalized. This is week six. He's still hospitalized. Can you imagine that? They had to actually cut his, cut him open to get the infection out. They, it would not drain. 
right, would not train. The CDC is is called into a couple of places. They have to do their assessment because it's uh, it's this stuff is just all over the place. It is, and um, now you have other nations that don't want certain areas, believe it or not, coming from the U.S. going to them. I miss my cold weather. I do. Anyway, though, get ready for that. Get ready for all those things. Right? Do what's responsible. And you probably will not have a problem. But if you do the, if, if you let your guard down, right? if you do something that's uh, not very responsible, well, there are consequences to that, especially in these days. Especially, I think, what are we dealing with now as far as flesh-eating bacteria? Aren't we dealing with over, uh, 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 what, what is it, seven dozen types of flesh-eating bacteria? Uh, so, guys, just just uh, be responsible. Look after your families, right? Go the extra mile if need be. Right? Go the extra mile. But uh, these things are they're just beginning. Just beginning, and insects. Well, they 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 carry quite a few things. They do. Mike, did you hear about China uh, building a hydrogen pipeline? Long yes. Also heard about Japan building that ginormous neutrino detector water tank in the mountain. Yeah, I heard about that too. Actually, I've, they've already started in Japan. And it's inside a mountain, it is. And it is enormous. And it will be filled full of water so clean that you could drop a piece of metal in it and it would eat the, eat the metal away. Water that pure is going to store trillions of gallons of water. Trillions. The problem is China also has a tank that will store trillions of gallons of water. Right? And then we have two tanks that store trillions of gallons of water. Oh, and that Germany has one tank that stores trillions of gallons of water. Oh, and Russia has two tanks that, that store trillions of gallons of water. Right? It's like a trillion gallon of water club all over the world. They didn't tell anybody about it, right? Under the guise of neutrino detectors. Interesting, huh? Very interesting. So they're piping in water all over the place, right? Hope you're not buying that one. I mean, it looks good on paperwork. It looks good for the construction site, you know, for the moment. But, um, yeah, those little lies are going to run out. Here's the problem. With every tank they're building, they already have a tank underneath. They're already covered over the older tanks. Those tanks that they have underneath are already uh, they're, they're seven years old. They began building these, uh, I believe, um, it was about seven or eight years ago. So they finished the one tank, right? This filled full of trillions of gallons of water, and they start these dud projects on top. Hmm. Interesting days. Folks, listen. Okay. Well, that's enough. I'm blabbing now. I'm going to say God bless you guys. I'll be back tomorrow. I will. Be black tomorrow. Did you see the dragon laser the UK say they have some new tech they pretending is new? They can all start using it. Well, listen, anybody who's old in COT, I told you guys something about World War Three and the Abrams tank. Do you guys remember? Not only the Abrams tank, but common gear, right? That will be issued to soldiers. Who remembers? Anybody remember? When you see the lasers mounted, right? Do you guys remember that? And the belts the soldiers were carrying with the rifles. Do you guys remember? You might want to look at the battlefield inventory. You might want to look. You may want to look. My goodness. We are in those times. I also told you guys that when we're in those times, I won't make reference to a lot of those things. I won't do it. It'll be a waste of time to re rehash all of my plan. Plus, there's certain things I'll never be able to talk about again. When it comes to lasers, period. 
How many of you guys are hobbyists? How many are hobbyists? Have you heard of a common CO2 laser, right? Anybody who tinkers is naturally have heard of a CO2 laser, right? Maybe 102, 300 watt laser, right? Have you ever heard of a diode laser? A diode laser, listen to me, a diode laser, that's a 1,000 watts of raw diode power that can cut through clear acrylic or burst glass and do all that stuff. Now, we're talking about a blue diode laser cutting through something clear. If you guys tinker, that makes no sense, correct? A CO2 laser is white light. It's white light. Think of a blue CO2 laser whose wavelength of that color blue should never cut acrylic or, or some clear, you know, material. Nor should anything that's a diode, laser emitting diode be a thousand watts. Are you kidding? And we're not talking about an offset array, which is a common configuration of these small little, you know, these little put, put your eye out beam things. No, one diode laser, 1,000 watts. Hmm? My goodness. Well, well, you guys, I'm telling you, you, maybe some of you may not understand what that means because the color is blue and it can just, it's going to go right through clear material and burst it, burn it, vaporize it, do whatever. That's a game changer. That is a game changer. It's also impossible. It is impossible. You cannot have a blue laser. To do that, a blue laser will not do that. A blue laser, you can take white material, right? For a blue laser, it's not going to do a thing. It won't. It's not going to do a thing. Hmm. Do you know that if you point a blue laser from the ground to the sky, nobody can see it? You can activate a 20 billion watt laser from the ground to the sky that's blue and not one soul will ever see it. Do you know that? You wouldn't see it. You would not see it. You can't even feel it. You cannot hear it. You could conduct warfare that way. And nobody would ever know warfare was taking place. So long as you shoot it from the ground up. Folks, God bless each of you. I'm going to join you all tomorrow right here at COT, and we'll continue with our study and revelation and some news updates. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, well, a green laser do it. It's powerful enough. It, it may. It may. It may. But in most cases, you need a CO2 laser to cut through clear material, right? Green, blue, all those colors normally don't work. Even a red won't work. It's, it's, the wavelength is too short, right? It's just, just too short. So how can a blue burst through all that stuff? That means it goes through metal instantly. Folks, God bless you. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.